So I wanted to start off by talking about something that when I was uh, preparing for this stream, preparing for this all, this entire forum, um, I, I found to be really fascinating. And it's cool because I actually spoke about this earlier today with uh, Wolfie, one of our supporters. And that is the topic of uh, machine learning, AI, being used to aid in game development. Um, I think I want to start off by bringing up a paper here. Let me just pull up the window here. Okay. Yeah, this is by the Google AI blog, but this is kind of going to bring an idea of what we're talking about here. Uh, you can start to use machine learning, which is AI, basically, uh, in game development. So I'm going to read a little bit about this, and we're going to talk about it. Um, this is directly in relation to a prototype game called Chimera. So it says, over the year, online multiplayer games have exploded in popularity, captivating millions of flavors across the world. Uh, exponentially increase the demands on game designers and players expect the games to be well crafted and balanced. Yes, they do. It's still fun to play a game where a single strategy beats all the rest. Basically, it's, you know, we all know that. We're all game developers here. We're all people who uh, want to make games and love playing games, and we know that. You know, it's, we, we know that it takes a lot to make them. So, this, this process is not only time consuming, but it's also imperfect. The more complex the game, the easier it is for subtle flaws to slip in through the cracks. We've all been there. Um, uh, an asset that doesn't yeah. quite work, an animation that uh, is off on SPS, um, right. you know, something where you have to create a hundred assets for your game jam game, and the next thing you know, your game jam game is not finished because you had a hundred assets to make. Right. Yeah. Um, so what this article goes into is the idea of using machines, AI, to create uh, various parts of the game, and that's really what we're going to go over today. Um, the the uh, use case here is a game called Chimera. It's a game prototype. And what Chimera did was it's kind of a, a card battler game. Uh, similar in concept to like your, your Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, you know, uh, any any card battler game really. I'm not a big fan of those. Magic the Gathering, that kind Magic of stuff. Magic the Gathering. You know, but you, you have your monsters like in Yu-Gi-Oh! And the artwork for these were created using a bunch of images. So you had uh, a set of images like different creatures, mice, um, uh, bats, that kind of stuff. And what this AI did was create a massive amount of artwork using machine learning. Uh, right here, you know, the, the creatures are summoned, spells are used, and these various artifacts, art effects, right here, as you can see, were created using this machine learning. And that is something that I'm starting to see as being a, uh, a trend. You can use artificial intelligence and machine learning to create new stuff for your games. Um, kind of takes a lot of the load out. Uh, I want to show you all a couple of examples real quick. So let me pull up something here. All right, give me a second. So this is, you ever wonder what Teal looks like? This is a picture of Teal um, from, uh, an an or I think one of our fifth, tenth, one of our anniversaries. One of our anniversaries. Yeah. This is a picture of Teal from one of our anniversaries. <laughs> and I used uh, an AI program called Art Breeder, which I'll show you in a bit, to um, combine with her real life picture to create a relatively accurate representation of Teal during that during that uh, anniversary. So let me go ahead and pull that onto the screen. There we go. <laughs> so that is what Teal from Studio Blue looked like back during our anniversary. Yeah. And that is really accurate. I mean, yeah, there's there's some issues here and there with the art lines and stuff like that. It's not perfect, but that is how Teal looked like. You know, she had that, the, the facial structure, the lip structure, the nose structure. This is all very accurate. And I ran it by her to make sure I wasn't making that up. Yes. <laughs> um, I'm picky about my pictures. But this is also uh, using, as you can see, the same shader color and eye color as her avatar. Um, specifically the one that, the static avatar we but this is a machine. This wasn't me. I didn't do this. Uh, we didn't hire an artist on Fiverr to do this. This was a program that took her yeah. and combined it with her anime ID, her anime character, mm -hmm. and came out with, well, pretty good. Yeah, I think it's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good representation. <laughs> so I wanted to share that with you guys. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain, just do a quick, oh, hey, Burke. Hey, Burke, welcome. Yeah. <laughs> welcome to the forum. Yes, welcome to the forum. Um, I wanted to play something real quick. Uh, if you all are fans of Fallout, 
you'll probably recognize this as a Curie. And I have Curie saying something. This is also created through machine learning. Mm -hmm. so let's see if I can get this to play properly. Tell me if you guys can hear this. This is a little new for me to do this. Yeah, let's see. All right. <laughs> so that was Curie from that was Fallout, Curie. Uh -huh. Fallout 4 saying how much wood could a woodchuck chuck. Uh, let me go ahead and turn the music down, pause the music for a second. Like I said, we're still getting used to how all this works. So I might have a couple of slip ups from time to time. Oops. Pull that back on. Right, I'm going to pause the music for a second. I'm going to play Curie again. Because Curie's cool. Yeah, Curie's awesome. I love her. She's not my favorite follower, but I do I do love Curie. She's cute. Right, here we go. So not perfect, not by any stretch, but still a lot better than, you know, me trying to splice syllables from the actual game or trying to hire someone who sounds just like Gary. Right. Um, and here is a musical piece that an AI machine made for me, me giving it just a set of parameters. Sort of an upbeat, epic, more, you know, it's kind of got that, uh, you know, we're, a field music could be used. Let's see if you guys can hear that. See? That's pretty good. You just put in a few little parameters mm -hmm. and it comes out with that. Yeah, this was something a machine made. I didn't make this. So, you know, all of these examples, the picture of Teal, the... Um, Curie, I'll play her again since I've turned the volume up, and um, this musical piece. This is stuff that a AI made for me within a relatively short amount of time. Yeah. Now, is it perfect? No. No. But no. does it do the job? Could it could it be used to prototype? Absolutely. Sure. I mean, you can't compare it to JD or any composer. This right. Is, this is not supposed to take the place of something. Um, this is supposed to... But if you need something quick uh, mm -hmm. for an area, the, the, you've, you've got it right there. What I like about these is the fact that it's very time-saving. Uh, it really is. It really honestly is. Let me turn the volume down and yeah. get the music back on. That's like, what I like about these, that you can save a lot of time. Yeah. And put your energy and focus onto uh, areas of the project that require a lot more energy than focus. Right, right, exactly. Um, you know, this game here, Chimera, was obviously put together with um, a lot stronger AIs probably than what I used, and also was probably put together with a lot more time. Everything that I just showed you, including the picture of Teal and the music, all, all three of those things, is stuff that took me relatively quickly. I think maybe about Gosh, I would say the whole, all three of them took me less than 30 minutes to put together. That's including signing up for the sites and tweaking. So these are things that came together really fast. You know, about 30 minutes of prep time. Exactly. And see, uh, uh, Zyphal, I feel the same way you do. Uh, some of these are, are better than I could ever do on my own. Mm -hmm. And this is a real game changer, I think, for the solo developer. Right. You don't have to have an entire team to put together a, a simple game now. Right. But this is going to go beyond just assets, guys. I'm, I'm showing you this, and I'm going to show you a few websites, because right now, that's what this is. This is assets. But let's think a few steps beyond. The more information you feed a machine, especially these kind of machines that run on these algorithms, the better they're going to get at figuring out how to recreate it or create something original based on it. Yeah. So look at like your mapping, uh, dialogue. I mean, we all have seen the memes, I showed my AI every Batman film ever made, and then it came out with this, and it's absolutely ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Because these are early examples of it. But technology is changing every day. I mean, again, look at this. Look at this picture right here. This is not perfect, but this is something better than I could ever do. You know, if it, I had known, it gets the job done. If I hadn't known these were AI developed, if someone hadn't told me that, I wouldn't know. Yeah. And the point of this is that we 
are watching technology evolve so quickly that in time, while this will never replace a human being, it will help make a human being's job a lot easier. Imagine if you were trying to put a game together and you needed to have sound effects and you don't have time to do Foley. You don't have time to uh, go to a library. Well, you could load up an AI and give it a set of parameters and it could create, you know, a couple of dozen explosions, a couple of dozen bullets. That kind yeah. Of thing. Oh, I think we have a gift sub here. Oh, or is it a sub it, sub? Yes, it's real Tron. Gifted a sub to Murda. Awesome. Thank you, Tron. Thank you. Thank you. And I think that's the big point that I want to bring up here. Um, you know, people have a concern that AI is going to replace people. It never is. No, no. It just replaces tasks. Yes. It's not going to replace a job. Right. It shouldn't replace a job. It shouldn't. In my opinion... Mm -hmm. An AI is only as good as the data you give it. That's true, yes. And nothing can replace the, the sheer creativity of a human being. I agree completely, Teal. Yeah. Um, happy sub. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you again, Tron. And that's, I think, where we're going to, uh, as, as Teal and I would say, that's where we're going to absolutely agree. Um, it is a task-related thing. I think it was Burke who said that. Yes, you know, it was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It is tasks. So if you're a small team, let's say that you and uh, a dozen people are trying to make uh, a really epic game. You know, you want to go uh, like Edge of Eternity, but you don't want to take the amount of time they took. They took like five, six years. Let's say you want to take less time. Well, if machine learning is what it is at that time, if it has improved, you could use the machine to replicate and, and complete a lot of the tasks that would have taken you all away from the more hardcore development. Right. Um, like, for example, Art Breeder. Art Breeder is not perfect, but these are some nice pictures. You could feed in that and start getting your artwork. Maybe you get some concept art that you can hand to your level designers. You know, you combine a mountain set here and a mountain set there, and then you get this beautiful thing. Then you hand it to your level designer, and your level designer makes the lone mountain where the dragon sits upon. Right. Um, or here. Uh, this is what I was using earlier. Uh, XVA synth to create Curie's voice. Right now it only works for like uh, Bethesda, Mass Effect, Cyberpunk, certain characters. But this right here can be used to uh, synthesize anything. Let's say that you have a voice actor. And let's say that that voice actor uh, records 300 lines and it costs you quite a bit of money. Because voice actors are not cheap. And you get your 300 lines recorded, but then that voice actor has to go on another contract or you find that you have to re-record some lines. Well, option one is you uh, bring the person back in the studio, play and pay them more, studio time, their time, etc. Option two, if you have an AI, you feed all 300 lines, so it kind of gets their biome, their voice model, biome, their voice model, uh -huh. and then you have the machine put out the rest of the dialogue. Just make sure you cover yourself in your contract. Uh, here's this, here's what I made, here's what I used to make that music that uh, JD would beat up. You know, just something like this. You can just yeah. toss it and get a good prototype sound. You know, hey, um, something that you can use as a placeholder or something you can give to your composer. And say, I kind of like this. See what you can do with it. Except make it sound more like, you know, Final Fantasy VII's boss theme. Something like that. <laughs> and then some people have heard of this. Uh, GitHub has something called Copilot, which is actually going to create blocks of code. Now, I know that makes every single programmer in the, uh, in the audience, every single programmer listen to it, is tearing their hair out and getting their mini guns ready to tear this entire stream to shreds, but bear with me. Why couldn't a machine create blocks of code? Not your whole program, but blocks of code. And I think that's kind of, to, to kind of start to head towards the, uh, at least my end of it, is I see the way that's going. The more we do, let, let's say you give it a whole bunch of RPG Maker maps, or a whole bunch of Unreal terrain maps, and then the uh, AI can put that out for you. Yeah. You know? I, I can see in chat that people are like, yeah, it could do that. It could replicate. It could it could do the tasks. Uh, what's KB saying? KB says that uh, RPG Maker kind of does that already. Yeah. So the, why not? And, and, and that's right. right. It per does. The procedural map generator. Mm -hmm. the, uh, Absolutely. Random map generator. Yeah. So let's take it a step further. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Let us... Uh, th there, there's nothing more tedious uh, for me than making a mountain area with crap ton of trees <laughs> and then i have to have four maps like that right 
So why not let a machine do the heavy lifting for the mm -hmm. basic part, and then you come in and you modify it. Maybe and I modify it, make it pretty. Yeah, make, make the terrain, you know, hey, maybe uh, change some of the terrain where it doesn't quite fit your critical path. Right. And then uh, start adding trees and adding ridges and, and roads, you know, but it just saved you a ton of time. Mm -hmm. And I think that is, I think that's the main thing. It's a time saver. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, uh, KB's thinking about the code itself. Yes, well, yeah. Yes, RPG Maker does have developers that do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you teach a machine to program in JavaScript and you feed it a whole bunch of RPG Maker plugins using JS and J JSON. Yep. And you say, hey, look, I'm trying to go in this direction here and the machine might be able to help you. Yes, Luck Lorian, we are talking about machine learning. Yes. Yes, AI and how it can aid you in game development, yeah. uh, especially the solo developer. Right. We are not there yet with it doing what we'd like it to do. Not quite, but we're getting there. But we're getting there. We're, we're getting a lot there. further along than we were even three years ago. Yep. And I agree, Burke. Topography oh. is a pain in the butt in 3D engines. It uh, is. Topography is is can can be a nightmare, and I would love for a, a machine to take over some of the the heavy lifting yeah. and and all the rote stuff. Yeah. The uh, the difficulty with um, any type of 3D mapping is you spend an inordinate amount of time on every single piece. You know, you create an outside area like a mountain range mm -hmm. or a forest. You're going to spend as much time on the landscape as you are placing the trees, as you are adding, you know, the rocks, the water features. Uh huh. It, it's a very large, very time-consuming process. Why not have a machine take out a big chunk of that? Mm hmm So, yeah. It, yeah. You can manage your time a lot better, I think. And then again, I'm just, I'm thinking of all the, the time-saving mm -hmm. uh, tasks that the, the machines can do. Yeah, absolutely. 100% feel. And it seems like you guys uh, in, in the, the chat kind of get it. You get it. That's, that is where we need to be. We need to uh, accept the fact that machines can make our lives easier. I mean, technically it's what a game engine is. A game engine is something that makes making a game easier because you can make any game programming. Well, sure. You could load up your DirectX library, get your Visual C++ Studio opened up, and Visual C Studio opened up, <laughs> opened up your debugger, and you can program an entire game now. You could, but why would you? When you have a game engine that makes it easier. So let's take it a step further. Let's have machines help us make our games that much better.